What is up guys? My name is John Grimsmo and this is Knife Making Tuesday week 52. I've got a lot of cool stuff new in the shop and a lot of cool things to go over in this video. You may notice first of all how I seem to be in higher definition with maybe some better lighting. Well, it's because I got some new video toys. This is the camera that I used to shoot everything with, almost everything. Notice how right there there's a nasty scratch on the lens? Yeah. So this is the kind of video I used to shoot all the time. Um, you can see the scratch, the big fuzzy section right there. Right in my eyes. Yeah, that scratch kind of sucks. And the this light doesn't or this camera doesn't do too good in low light uh, you know, scenarios. And even though it's a super sunny day outside, I'm kind of in my garage and there's shadows and everything. But yeah, my new camera is super duper awesome. It's a Sony HDR CX190. So this is uh, what it is, and I got a, an arm with the light here. It's a LumaHawk um, 144 LED light adjustable, and you can adjust the color from tungsten to white. So that is really cool. So I can go all the way from the what they call the tungsten color to neutral to white, which is almost bluish. Um, but yeah, so you can change, you know, for pale skin people or whatever. Put it right about there, maybe. And this is on low. That's on high. Holy crap. So just for face shots like this, low is going to be perfect. But for up-close shots on the machine, I think high or whatever it takes is going to be uh, really cool. So this camera, I'm pretty much not going to use it anymore because that scratch is horrendous. And because my new one is wicked awesome. Up next, if you remember a few weeks ago, I said I got some new toys for the shop. Uh, a lot of you guessed at a few things, and uh, for the moment, you're wrong. Nobody guessed this, but let's, uh, let's check it out. So this here is a VacMagic VM300 from Mighty Byte, and it's a vacuum work holding system. It's got these two alignment pins here so that you can repeatedly put fixtures on here, and a O-ring that goes around the outside that helps suck it down, and this thing generates thousands of pounds of downward force and the alignment pins keep it um, horizontally stable. So this is one of the pallets that it comes with. This is a vacuum fixturing pallet. It's got two alignment liners in the bottom as well as some handle grips. And once you line it up with the holes, it goes right down and this knob right here turns it on and off. And then here I've got an O-ring cord stock that just comes in a long spool and uh, I figured out if you just sort of overlap it right here, you don't have to cut it, and for testing purposes, you can just leave it long. And I've got a chunk of titanium right here. Um, and then once I turn the lever, push it down. Stuck. Now the only downside to the system is, as you can hear, the noise. It uses a Venturi pump that converts air pressure into suction pressure. If you're curious how that works, just Google Venturi and you'll see lots of images and, and descriptions on how that works. It's a really cool, genius little setup. I just got this thing keyed in and aligned to the machine yesterday um, on alignment pins so that I can, the, the pallet system itself, the blue part, I can actually put that back on my, my machine repeatedly in case I ever need to remove it. But I think I'm going to be able to use this for everything from now on. Um, so not only is it useful for holding little things like that, or you could hold, um, I don't know, let's say you wanted to make a ring to hold this round vacuum gauge. Um, you could machine a groove, put an O-ring in it, and put that down, and it would suck this down in case you needed to machine that. Um, or anything, any weird shape. So for quick setups, or even for repeatable jobs, um, like for cutting out these wood blanks, you could put it in a vise, or you could just do it like that. Suck it down, do some of your milling, and um, you have to use your brain to get a little creative and see examples of what other people are, are doing with these, but the, the possibilities are really intense. Um, and then if you need a little bit more positional stability, like when I shove this guy down, because it's only being held in by five squares of vacuum force, it can only pull so much. The more surface area you have, the more pull it has. So if I suck it down, then I can wiggle it a tiny little bit. So if that's the case, then you can drill and tap some of these holes for um, these Mighty Byte brass cam lock um, clamps. 
And basically the, the cool thing with these is that the head is off center. So as you rotate it, it kicks it out a little bit more. So, you know, you could put these here and uh, keep the block positionally stable while the vacuum keeps it down. So that's going to be freaking amazing. Um, although, now although this is cool, the whole vacuum O-ring setup, what I'm even more excited about, let me just move all this stuff, is using this as a pallet system. Now if you've been watching my videos, um, you've seen how I, I switch pallets between back and forth. Um, and the way that I was doing it before was to have four bolts that attach one pallet to the next, next pallet. And it works okay. Um, but there were downsides to that and things that I didn't like about it. Whereas this, you turn it, turn it off, um, and then this pallet comes right off. And you've got another pallet with these liners pressed in. Goes right on. Find the pins, you're done. So now a pallet change will take seconds. Um, and you can have two pallets per set of parts. Like let's say I'm making these G10 Tor handles. I could line up one pallet with bolts <clears throat> and bolts and bolts and bolts and rows of them. And then once this is done machining, I can pull this pallet off and put another identical pallet on with another row of these already attached to it. So pallet changes will be much quicker, production will be faster. And uh, it's just another cool fun toy to play with, which is kind of one of my weaknesses. So right here I've got, this is the pallet I used to use to make my Norseman handles and pocket clips. And underneath it, I've got a new pallet that hasn't been made yet, it's just a raw piece of aluminum. So my old pallets were three quarter thick, this new one is one inch thick, because um, the the blue vac magic is only about 14 inches wide and my pallets are 18 inches wide. So if they're going to overhang a little bit, it's good to have it nice and thick. So for all my fixture changes, um, I'll be able to use this system for pretty much everything. And like I was saying before, when I had this little block on the, the rubber o-ring, um, yeah, it could wiggle a tiny little bit, but that's a very small surface area. When you're talking about this entire surface area, the clamping force is just intense. And it's got the alignment pins so that there is no chance of any wiggle side to side or up and down. And it holds everything just perfectly flat. I'm, I'm really excited to start using this, this system. I've known about these vacuum systems for quite a while, but I've never fully understood all the capabilities of them. I always thought it was just for holding little weird stuff like this. And when you start thinking about my knife handles, you know, they've got screw holes in them, they've got lanyard holes and, and everything. And on the lock bar, there's this lock bar cutout. So, I always thought of it as just, you know, putting an O-ring around here and sucking down a handle, and I didn't think that would be good enough, um, which it, it kind of isn't. It's not a lot of surface area to suck it down with. So it's not a good solution for milling out the handles by themselves, but when you consider putting a whole pallet on there and still using my method of screwing these down or whatever, um, just the pallet changes by themselves are going to be wicked. So today what project I'm going to work on for Knife Making Tuesday is to show off some of the awesomeness of the VAC Magic system. I'm going to take this chunk of aluminum, 5 8 thick by 10 by 5 I think, I'm going to turn that into a fixture that's going to get sucked onto that vacuum grid plate with a big o-ring, and then I'm going to turn these two sheets of G10, black and OD green, into a bunch of inlays for a knife. Um, normally I've said this before many times, but normally I don't take on custom work um, from other people, other knife makers, but there's this one knife maker I've promised uh, quite a while ago that I would make all these for him, and he sent me these sheets of G10, and I, it's time to uh, fulfill that promise, so I'm going to make a whole bunch of inlays for him. But yeah, please don't, please don't go asking me to make all kinds of stuff for you, pocket clips, inlays, whatnot, because I've, I'm just too busy with my own stuff. Um, i got to catch up on this project and then uh, get back to doing my own stuff. Um, all last week I was working on my Tor knives and Norseman stuff and uh, I'm getting ready to start filming a bunch of that stuff. So, But for today, let's just do these inlays because I've got a really cool way of fixturing it down, not just with the vacuum, which is awesome enough, but um, you'll see. So let's jump right into it. So to do this job, it's gonna require seven tools to make the, the fixture and the parts. Um, almost all of these were purchased from Lakeshore Carbide, so it's a corner rounder, a drill bit, eighth inch drill bit, eighth inch two fluid end mill, 
1 16th inch flat end mill, a 440 thread mill, uh, chamfer mill drill to spot all the holes, and then a 2 inch face mill to face the fixture down. So one of the cool things about having a tool changer is that you can set all of your tools, your commonly used tools, into holders like this and have the machine and the, the software remember the offset length so that uh, you know doing a tool change you just put the new one in and it remembers exactly how long it is and since CNC is so precise and accurate and uh, amazing um, accuracy is is very important so I use Tormax electronic tool setter here to set up all my tools you can see the little LED comes on when it's when it breaks contact so I tell the computer I've got tool 33 in there I hit the button And then I'll put in tool 34. Jog it down until it's really close. And do it again. So keeping everything really, really accurate is very important in CNC. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the fixture. This is that chunk of aluminum we were talking about before. So I've got a grid laid out with the O-ring. Um, these holes have not yet been tapped. They come pre-drilled. Uh, and a, a metric M4 bolt just happens to slip inside it quite nicely. So I'm going to use the, the bolt as a uh, locating stop, basically. So I've got three of them in here, so I can go that way and this way. They're not really meant designed to keep the the fixture from moving side to side, but I think with such a large surface area, it's going to suck this thing down no problem. So, let's give it a go. There it goes. You can actually hear it when it goes down. Off. See it lifting? Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Next up I've got this piece of 8th inch G10, black G10, that I'm going to put on the same o-ring against these same bolt stops that I'm using. So I just have to push it down and over as I turn it on. And you can see it getting sucked down. Pretty cool. So now that I've got all the holes um, bored out for a, an exact diameter, I'm going to do some 440 thread milling.
All right, guys, so finally making good progress on these. I got the first batch done. Um, you can see there's a bunch of spots on the fixture that either they broke and fell off, or um, I was having trouble drilling through this this aluminum with an eighth inch drill bit, um, breaking the drill bed, getting it stuck, because I didn't want to use flood coolant and I don't have a, a mister set up. Um, so anyway, um, there's a couple spots missing, but that's just fine. And uh, over here is where I did a bunch of my testing on the first first run. So, But yeah, I got a plate done. And they all look perfect. They all look really good. Got one more plate to do here. All the holes are drilled and threaded. You can see. And then, uh, yeah, so that's that project. And I've, I've spaced them, or I've made them exactly the right thickness so that they press into a, uh, an eighth inch slot into titanium. So they're a good kind of squishy press fit. Um, so they shouldn't require any glue or anything, but a little bit of glue wouldn't hurt. So, yeah, there we go. So that should do it for Knife Making Tuesday this week. Um, uh, I'm kind of bummed that it's not my own stuff and that this is for somebody else, but uh, it's still cool knife making stuff. And I'm really stoked about the new fixturing setup and, uh, and this way with screws holding each individual piece on. Um, it, it worked out really well. And uh, I'll be doing more stuff like that in the future for sure as far as fixturing goes. And the vacuum pallet works awesome. Um, it sucks more air than I thought it would. So my compressor, which is kind of an older, crappier, one horsepower compressor. Um, it it keeps up, but it, it gets pretty warm, and I can actually I can smell it in the garage because it's got all this crap on top, uh, oily junk. Like uh, you know, it's probably like thirty years old. Um, so yeah, when it heats up, it kind of stinks. But um, so I might get a new piston and motor for that eventually soon, and then uh, it won't cycle so much. But yeah, so there we go, guys. I uh, got a bunch of side videos to do at some point. And oh, what do you think of my new camera? How's the quality compared to what you've been seeing before? The lighting, pretty awesome. This is what I used to do. Now I actually have light, and this is on low. Wow. Yeah, so even just on low, it's awesome. Pretty cool. So let me know what you think of the camera and how it works. I, I think it's going to look really good. Thanks, guys. Bye.